Hi, Vincent Hall, and welcome to another episode of our Featured Artist Series. Today, we're going to hear from Mr. Frank Kerrigan. Frank is an active member of the photography class, having joined a few years ago. So he's a more recent member of our community, at least the art community. Anyway, um, Frank started out by wanting to learn more about the actual editing aspects of photography, but within short order turned into an amazingly gifted photographer, as you'll see from the work he's decided to share with us in the interview. I hope you enjoy what you see. I'm sure you will. And all the other fun things we'll learn about Frank. Without further ado, Mr. Frank Kerrigan. All right, Frank, I'd like to thank you for being our interviewee for this week's feature for the Vincent Hall Featured Artist Series. So welcome. Thank you, Mel. Oh, so I thought um, everyone would like to hear from all of our artists a little bit about their background, because not everyone knows everybody, but this is certainly a way to share. So maybe you could give us a little bit of your background. Oh, I'd love to. I graduated from Syracuse in 1969 with a degree in political science pre-law mm. with an intention of maybe going to law school, but there were events in Southeast Asia at that time that wow. precluded that. <laughs> and I had also graduated being a member of ROTC with a commission as a second lieutenant in the Army and in military intelligence. So from for the next 11 years, from 1969 until, was it that 2000? Let's see. No. Uh, boy, my math is way off. <laughs> no, I'm never good, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, let's just say for the next 20 years, okay. I was in uh, in Army Intelligence with a number of assignments in Europe and Asia. And uh, I came to Washington and uh, met my wife, my former wife, bought an old house in Arlington, and that was given a job offer at the Defense Intelligence Agency, and I took that. Oh, so I did about 11 years of active duty, and, and that's Eli. Of course, we all know you as Eli's dad. So. And uh, stayed with the Defense Intelligence Agency roughly until about two, 2006, retired, and had a number of different experiences in retirement, both as a contractor and as a volunteer. Hmm. and became really full-time uh, retired in about, uh, I want to say, 2010. Oh. Uh, had a little marital issues and then found myself on the street and then over here at Vincent Hall. <laughs> and oh, it was a great street. time. <laughs> okay. So did you join the photography class shortly after you moved in? Yes, I did. I think it was oh, within months of moving in. Oh, okay. And what inspired you to give photo a try? Well, I had some experience in my uh, with photography, uh, not in the acquisition of photography, but in the interpretation, et cetera, et cetera, while I was in military intelligence and with defense intelligence. Oh. And, uh, and it was always, I had a father that loved to take pictures and you'd sit for hours in front of a, a, a hung sheet with his old time photo floodlights in, while he was taking pictures. So I think it's a little bit of, you okay. know, familial. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I do remember when you first came to the photo class, you enjoyed zooming in to see all the details. So I figured there was some <laughs> intel experience involved with that. But I was in the don't ask, don't tell. So I didn't. So <laughs> it's good to know. Um, what, after you've been in the photography class um, a little while now, you've really become extremely proficient in taking beautiful pictures that I know everyone enjoys seeing in the shows. I, I mean, I really have seen your talent blossom, but what are some of your favorite subjects? Hmm. At first, at first it was, as you can tell, I loved bridges and ferry boats and train tracks and things like that. Sure. And then as, uh, as my grandson uh, started to grow a bit, uh, I think I, I love taking pictures of him. Okay. Uh, but, and now I think due to, due to the class and everything else, my interests are really, I, I take my phone everywhere and find things 
I said, well, that might, that might look interesting. So it's really a, whatever catch, catches my eye at the moment. I don't know if that's an out for your question, but. <laughs> no, I think that's an, a great answer, actually. I think that makes it understandable to people because it truly should be what catches your eye and your individual interest. So you're one of our photographers that use their iPhone for the photography class. Yes. Yes. And I just want people that watch this. So some folks have approached me in the hall and said, oh, I can't join the photo class. I don't have a big fancy camera. So what do you find? Do you find it works for you with the phone? Yes, really. <clears throat> Super. <laughs> Is, okay. Yes. So people. Even though I have an old cabinet here full of, with two Leicas and a Rolleiflex in it. <laughs> And well, I, I would rather use the iPhone. I, I hear you on that. It's certainly convenient. I don't like lugging my big stuff around at all anymore. So I get that. And I'm afraid to. I might drop them or do something like that. Well, there's that too. So I understand. So, well, I think we can look at some of your work that you've been willing to share with us. And maybe you can walk us through where you were, what, who the people are, and what you were looking to capture. I would love to. Right, so here's our first image, Frank. You might want to tell us a little bit about it. All right, this is in response to our, our nighttime task <laughs> <laughs> or assignment in photography. And it's from, uh, what do, I don't want to call it, it's our backyard. It's the big hill at Vincent Hall looking down towards Old Dominion Drive. And it's on my nightly walk with Eli. Okay. And... Uh, the colors, the lighting just took my eye at that point. And the challenge is holding Eli on the leash while I'm trying to take a photo at night. <laughs> oh, I think you're really successful. I love the way the imagery is here. And I know we played around in Photoshop learning how to do some rendering effects. Yes. So if people are looking at this, you can in Photoshop enhance these little things. I'm moving my oh, yeah. around like the little, little light things and stuff. If that works out. All right, then we have this one. This is my first experiment with panoramic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, that's a, a print that hangs on my wall, and it's the battle of, it's, oh, it's two brigades, it's two regiments, the first and second of the Irish Brigade, and I think it's the battle of White's Mill that's down uh, near Fredericksburg. Okay. That makes sense. And like I said, this was just fooling around with the camera. <laughs> and the panoramic mode. And that was one yeah. of our assignments. But I think it's really successful. And I like how you have repetition of the, um, the Venetian blind here. Then it shows up in this picture. Then it shows up again here. It's just a yes. nice, cool, multiple pattern effect. Oh, and this shadow here. I just saw that. Mm -hmm. Pretty fun. Oh, oh. one of my favorites. <laughs> That's my roommate. <laughs> and uh, once again it's just having the phone on the on the desk and turning around and seeing the light hit him as he's looking at me from the couch this is one of your most stunning photos just the colors that because eli blends in with his surroundings yet he's obviously in focus and what time of day was this i think it was afternoon Okay. It has to because the sh I'm looking at the shadow on the side of the couch mm. and it's in the way that it bows down to the side, just like it is now. I mean, so I would say it's late afternoon. That would make sense based on the light coming on the side and the catch light in his eye. Yes. But um, what makes this a stunning photo, besides, of course, it's Eli, a <laughs> great subject, is how you have the dark areas around the photo and it, all the lights concentrated on Eli. It's a vignette that just leads your eye right to his face and his eyes are just beautiful with the catch light and the expression. Did you enter this in any of the shows? No, this is this was all during our lockdown here. Oh, this will be a new one for the shows yeah. then. Oh, I, I see that as an award winner. That's beautiful. Yes, this during a, during our Zoom period in class and our quarantine here. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, you made good use of it. I'm glad Eli, Eli was cooperative. <laughs> okay. Oh. That is a Galileo thermometer, and I always love gadgets. Hmm. It, it sits on the uh, window ledge in my bedroom. Okay. 
and it's got all these little colored balls that go up and down and it, it I forget there's some kind of oil in each one of them with a certain specific weight and as the temperature in the room changes they rise and fall hmm. what is interesting about this it's it's counterintuitive is that the balls all go up when it's cold and go down when it's warm oh this is okay this is at night and uh, I just woke up and rolled over and I said Ooh, that looks interesting right there and took it again with the phone being close to me Wow, so it has a light inside of it? No, that's, that's, I think, I, oh, I was fooling around with the lighting adjustment on the, on the iPhone itself. Oh, okay. Wow, yes. that's great, because it really illuminated the entire object, but the background stayed nice and velvety black. Ooh. It's really pretty. Oh, <laughs> I love this picture. That's Murphy. <laughs> and that's a neighbor's dog back in my old neighborhood and these folks had me over for dinner and the dog jumps up onto the piano stool like he's gonna play something <laughs> and once again with the phone right in my pocket I said Ooh, that's gonna be a good photo and I captured old Murphy with Mozart behind him. I love it. <laughs> I love his expression too. He's very stoic. <laughs> You have a knack for animal pictures, Frank. I think you could get a side gig going here. <laughs> like really I should have mentioned that when we were talking about one of my favorite subjects. Yes, the dogs. Oh, yeah. I love, well, yeah, of course. They're great. Oh, well, and more. <laughs> yes. This is at a dog park in Arlington. And one of my friends there has the, the dog on the left is Oxy. Oh. And Oxy and Eli are good buddies. Oh, okay. It, it was, this was pre-pandemic, so I want to say it's probably, I want to say like December or November time frame. Okay. And there was, that. it's at that point of the day that we're, you always are talking about the golden hour. It was yeah. late in the afternoon and the sun is cascading from the left. And uh, I said, this is a, kind of neat one and snap that. Uh, it, this is one of my all-time favorites that you've done because I just love how both dogs are comfortable, they're relaxed, they're in their dog world mm -hmm. and it's just it's beautiful and yeah the lighting on Eli he looks so golden but photographing I assume that's a black dog sometimes they look like chocolate labs or is that is he that is a black he's a lab mix I yeah see. yes but photographing a black dog without either losing all the information due to the darkness or it blows out from the highlights this is perfect lighting on him that's gorgeous in fact this picture was selected and was in the contest with the animal welfare league of arlington for their for their uh 2000 for the 2021 calendar oh that's great wow congratulations <laughs> oh that's wonderful Clearly, it was before the COVID, though. They're not social distancing. Oh, yes. <laughs> not six feet between the dogs. No. <laughs> All right. Oh, what a great portrait. This is an old, old friend of mine, an Army buddy. And he got out of the Army, and he was an Oklahoma boy, and his wife was from Oklahoma. And he has a ranch out in nowhere between halfway between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And he's a modern day rancher. And we were just sitting in his little, in his living room, talking about things, philosophizing, who knows what. And I had, once again, the phone, I said, this is a good picture with his hat on and everything else. Oh, yes. And I like, I don't know if it was planned, but just the, the position of this chair creates Nothing this really, <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody that. Okay. Because because these these angles just frame his face perfectly. The fact that this chair is pulling you up, I mean, it's just the perfect composition for that. And the brown on his hat leads you back down into his face too. Nice colors. Did he know you were taking this picture? I think I caught him by surprise. Oh. <laughs> so that's not posed. Okay. He looks. He, kind of, he, he reminds me of Hemingway. <laughs> He looks very in thought, like deep in thought. Yeah. Oh, nice sunset. That's Oklahoma sunset. That's mm -hmm. from the uh, 
from the cabin out on the porch. And this uh -huh. has to be like around, I want to say, the 16th of December in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it and looks very so green. And the birdhouse, too. <laughs> oh, I like the birdhouse. That makes it. I think that adds to it a lot. Oh, this is stunning. And that's his, that's his, what's that, foreman. And that's Randy the foreman with the donkey. Aww. <laughs> and for right now, the donkey's name escapes me. <laughs> but <okay>. it, <laughs> he is everybody's donkey. He's just happy donkey. Yep. He looks very comfortable. Aww. This is beautiful. Now, I think, wasn't this one where we were playing around with some filters in yeah. class? And I didn't know what I was playing with. All of a sudden, something popped up. And I said, hey, Mel, this looks pretty good. <laughs> it looked great. And I think the rest of the class tried it, too. That's the beauty of class, is everybody learns from each other, too. But And again, the idea of the, um, the short depth of field, so the background is out of focus and in that creamy, soft focus way, just really brings your eye into the subject. That is, I just love this picture. I love everything, the colors. They, ex they both look happy. It's great. Well, believe it or not, I have this all packed up for them and it was planning to go out and, you know, things change. So. Uh, oh, so you were going to take this too? Yes. I was going to give it to Randy. Hopefully soon. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, one of your bridges. <laughs> uh, here's another thing that I never grew out of too is railroads. Hmm. And this is the New York, New Haven and Hartford uh, bridge at Saybrook over the Con Saybrook, Connecticut, over the R Connecticut River, and the bridge is open right now. Okay. And believe it or not, this bridge stays open until the cella is coming, and then it closes. Oh, and uh, huh. the bridge was built, by the way, in 1891, and is still operating. Wow! So things are made a little different then, I think. Clearly, it works still, which is yeah. unusual for now. I'm surprised it stays up as the norm. Usually, things are down. As well, the norm. Rail traffic is really diminished. I think. Oh, at least no, right true. now. Yeah. There's more, there's more pleasure boat and sailboat traffic on the river. Oh, than okay. The river so that way they can just pass through without trouble. That makes sense. I think this is so cool. What a story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is two cabins put together and where I used to spend my summers in Old Lyme, Connecticut, uh, there was an old town, a roadhouse next door called the Lakeview Inn right on the old Route 1. Oh. Well, the, the Lakeview Inn burned down and my uncle, whose property was right next door to it, went over and with the purchased these two cabins and put them together. So we have oh. a, on the far left was a kitchen and the okay. center was a uh, kind of a tiny living room and on the right was a bedroom. Oh. Well, what happened over the years and different people purchasing it, it really now looks like <laughs> Appalachia. Uh, well. <laughs> Better words. But yeah. even even in its, its tardiness now, tardiness, um, I thought it had a lot of interesting qualities with shapes, colors, and et cetera. Oh, absolutely. I think there's something intriguing about things that are not like perfect, but rather show a lot of wear, tear. Yep. I guess there's beauty in the imperfection. So does someone live there currently or is this an not abandoned? No, but there's a, the old house that my aunt and uncle uh, lived in is, to the left. Oh, okay. The camera, and uh, that's the, that is occupied. Got it. Okay. All right. Ah, the ferry. Uh, this again is in Connecticut on the uh, Connecticut River. And it's, I'm standing in Glastonbury, Connecticut, looking across the river towards Rocky Hill. And this is the oldest continuing operating ferry in the United States. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. And uh, it's now run by the state of Connecticut. And here we are again, Mel, with 
this is taken in late October, but it's late afternoon and we have that, that low level sun coming across. And I just think it's really neat with the colors oh. and especially the captain of the ferry boat in his luminescent yellow jacket <laughs> sitting there. And this oh, is- you can't miss him, yeah. This is what this one hangs in my front hallway. I like it so much. It going in and out of the the apartment. I want to should. I like it. I like the reflection of the boat in here too, and I like how his green almost mirrors some of this green grass. It just nice has a nice visual effect. Oops, there we go. Ah, oh, well, <laughs> that's Thomas Mackler Houston, and we were up at I forget. Clemmy John Tree Park, right up the road here in oh. uh, in McLean. Right, the playground, of course. Yes, and that's his very, very first carousel ride. Aww. And I'm holding on to the horse's neck, and you can see the brass rod where, he, where it goes up and down. Oh, right, yes. And I'm taking a one-handed shot with my iPhone, and, you can, uh, and that really surprised me when I... <laughs> what a gorgeous portrait of your grandson. I mean, just the eyes, the expression. I mean, this is a family keeper for generations. This is beautiful. Wow. So do, do his parents approve they like the picture? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> sure. And so I, does his grandmother, and so oh. does his son. <laughs> As they should. Wow. Well, these are a wonderful culmination of your photographic interests. I feel like I like the eclecticness of everything. There's lots of different things to look at, but um, just thank you so much for sharing all of these pictures here. Well, thank you, Mel, for being the photographic spark plug. Frank, thank you so much for sharing all those images, although I know you have plenty more where those came from. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so is there anything you'd like to share, final thoughts or anything? words of wisdom to the rest of the community? No, it's just step into it like I did with it and just start taking pictures. <laughs> okay, that sounds pretty funny, step into it. Really? <laughs> I like that, that's good. No, I think they should. And um, I know we look forward to seeing your work. <laughs> Hopefully we can do this art walk in September or, or some kind of way to see everybody in their groupings. But. Um, and I guess people will see you around with Eli, too. <laughs> All right. Well, keep photographing. So. I will. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Frank. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Frank, for being our artist and showing us some of your wonderfully varied and interesting subject matter. I'm sure everyone enjoyed seeing such beautiful scenes. The animals are always special. And, of course, that wonderful grandson of yours. As we will see the work in the following slideshow, everyone will get a second chance to enjoy each piece individually. Thank you again for tuning in to our featured artist series. We hope to see you down in the Art Center soon. As again, it's open. We're there every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can follow the classes along on the schedule outside the door or the one printed in the calendar by the concierge desk. Until we see you then, Take care and be well, Vincent Hall, and we'll see you next week.